morning. Good morning. Welcome to Colerain Presbyterian Church. Today we proclaim to the world there's power in the blood. Through the cross of Christ, we receive hope, healing, and new life. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, let us worship together, all who would serve Almighty God. That we are not worthy of our garments and not so far. God cares little for one's outer appearance. God, God. sees into our souls. For we are In Christ, you are God's beloved, so enter and fear not God's love. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our first hymn for today comes from uh, hymn number 196, There is a Fountain. Set your clocks 
back. And you made it here on time. If, uh, if somebody walks in with a quarter till uh, 12 in a day, let's all give them a round of applause. <laughs> they feel good. Let's look at our announcements this morning. Uh, again, Easter Flowers, the order form is out on the table in the narthex. If you'd like to order Easter Flowers for a love, for a in memory of a loved one. We are hoping to begin a this class probably sometime in this summer. So if you know of any kids, seventh grade through uh, high school, that would like to join church, uh, kind of spread, begin spreading the word on that. Deacons are taking the names of our 2020-2021 grads to honor. Again, uh, last year was the COVID year, and, and we missed honoring the grads, so we'd like to do it this year. Beautiful day the Lord has given us today, and uh, we are... Uh, happy and, and joyful to gather together on this uh, fourth Sunday in, in Lent. Um, any, anything else? Any other announcements that I missed? Joe announced that Linda went in the CAD test on Friday. We don't know the results, but we think that she looks better, doing better. And once again, I want to thank all of you for your prayers, and God bless all of you and the whole world. I love you all. And she does too. Continue to keep Linda in our prayers and pray that the, the test results come back uh, and, uh, 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 good and that she is cancer free. Cheryl? Uh, session meeting tomorrow night. Session meeting tomorrow night. And Debbie's back, so we're to see her. Not only is she back, she's going to uh, read the fourth Lent reading for us. So we're putting her right to work as soon as she gets there. <laughs> That's how we do it here at the Colorado Presbyterian Church. Stewardship meeting after church downstairs. Anything else? All right, we're ready for that. The passage of scripture that I'm going to read to you today for this Lent reading is from John 12, verses 1 through 3. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. After I anointed my Lord's feet, Judas complained about what I had done. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages, he said. I knew how much the nard was worth. It was the most precious thing I owned. I wonder about Judas. His words do not always reflect the content, con content of his heart. Does he really care about the poor, or is he out for himself? Does he really seek to serve Jesus or his own political schemes? Jesus defended me. He said, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you but you will not always have me. Why did he say this? Does he think Judas is a phony too? I believe Jesus can look deeply into a person's heart and see the true motives. Certainly, he knows what I feel. I save the nard to anoint him because he is God's chosen one. I truly believe he is the Messiah. I have dedicated not only my most precious possession to him, but also my life. I listen to his every word because his words are life. But now I feel upset, not because of what Judas said, but because Jesus said it was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. Those words make me anxious. Why does he speak of death? He is our hope of life. But how can that hope be realized if he dies? Evelyn is going to 
year our one billion dollars year. Trinity White Plume just turned 13. Like the garden she has newly learned to plant and tend, she is growing in extraordinary ways. Where Trinity lives on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, roughly the size of the state of Connecticut, there is but one grocery store. Moreover, Oga Ala Lakota County, where the reservation is located, has the lowest per capita income in the country and consistently ranks as the poorest county in the nation. During the pandemic, there was already a food desert and has become even more so, heightening the challenge of food accessibility for Trinity's family and all the families living in Pine Ridge. Thanks to the gifts for one great hour of sharing, the garden project, the garden projects of Owe Aku are making a difference. Owe Aku is a grassroots nonprofit organization that puts people in charge of their own food supply, nutrition, health, and well-being by reclaiming ancestral wisdom and teaching the Lakota history and culture. The Presbyterian Church USA partners with Owe Aku through the Presbyterian Hunger Program, supported by gifts to one great hour of sharing. Trinity is a young emerging leader with the potential to carry the program forward for many years. She attends and assists with every class, workshops put on by Owe Aku, and in turn, she and the other students have begun to teach their families. Gifts to One Great Hour Sherry helps address the root cause of hunger in places around the world, places like the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and others where food security is a very serious need. Please give generously, for when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Let us pray. God who plants gardens and tends people, make us gardeners with you and for all those who need food. May what we give and what we preserve and what we grow make Life of nourishment for all. Amen. All right, we're ready for our children's sermon. Don't trust that snake. I have a cat at home by the name of Sin. How many of you have cats? Few people have cats. I do not trust Sammy. <laughs> Sammy will jump up into my lap, and he'll want, he'll want to be petted, and, and I'm happy to do that, and I'll, I'll, I'll pet him. But if I pet him for too long, he bites me. I don't know if your cat does that or not. So I've learned not to trust Sammy. He'll jump up into my lap, and I'll pet him for a while, and, and then I'll stop. And if he paws me, I know he wants to pet him more. And so I'll pet him some more, rub his cheeks, and then I'll stop. But I won't do it for very long because I just don't trust Sammy. There was a, a man who was uh, walking along the road on a cold winter's day. And surprisingly, he saw a, a rattlesnake along the road. And, and, and he looked down at that rattlesnake. And he knew it was a rattlesnake. He knew it was a dangerous snake. But the snake said to him, Sir, it's cold out, and I, somehow I got kicked out of my, my den. My wife kicked me out of my den. Here I am along the road, freezing to death. I'm cold-blooded. If I don't get warm, I'll be in trouble. So the man, even though he knew it was a rattlesnake, felt sorry for the snake. He bent down and he picked up the snake and tucked him inside of his coat. About a mile along the road, the, the snake said, the sun came out. The snake peeked out his head and and said, uh, sir, I, I think I'm warmed up now. The sun's out. I think I'll be fine. Uh, you, can, you can put me down. And so the man took the snake out of his coat and put him down. And as he was putting him down, the snake reached out and bit him. The man got very angry. He said, I was so nice to you. Why did you bite me? And the snake said, because I'm a snake. Now, there's a very important lesson to learn. There are several important lessons the Lord there that I want to share with you. That man knew that snake was, was dangerous. He knew that that snake's reputation was to bite people. 
And, and yet he trusted him. So one lesson is, if you see people who do things wrong all the time, do bad things, don't trust them. That's very poor. Don't trust people who are doing things wrong and bad all the time. Now the snake begged the man to, to pick, him up, pick him up, and the man knew that uh, that snake, uh, the snake had a bad reputation. So the other lesson is, don't trust people who tell you to do something wrong. Boy, that's the worst thing you can do. Begin trusting somebody who wants you to do something wrong. That really gets you in, in trouble. Really, a good guideline to go by is, is wait until you really know a person and know who they are on the inside before you begin trusting them. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be friends with them and, and do things with them. But as far as really trusting them, wait till you get to know. And here's really probably the most important lesson. Uh, if you're not sure, ask mom or dad. Ask mom or dad who, who you can trust and who you, you can't trust because that's, that's very important. As we grow as believers in the Lord, in God, we gain wisdom on the inside. And as we gain wisdom and grow spiritually, we, we know better and better who to trust and who not to trust. But young people at your age, keep all those things in mind because uh, someone who's a snake I didn't end up biting you, so know who you can trust. Let's pray. Lord, give us wisdom, all of us wisdom, and uh, we, we know that we can trust people whose, character are, 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 whose characters are good, who love you and serve you, and, and won't lead us in the wrong direction, won't ask us to do something wrong, but will lead us in the right direction. Give us that kind of wisdom. Help us to understand, uh, Lord, uh, who we can trust, and as we grow spiritually, Lord, give us that wisdom and help us to be people who can be trusted. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Knowing that we are flawed human beings living in a fallen world, we come humbly before our holy God. And it is by God's grace through the Son that we can be restored and renewed. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Lord, so often we have formed our opinions of those around us based only on their appearances, not upon the precious souls they possess. Forgive us, Lord, for we know we probably never have chosen Isaiah or Moses or even John the Baptist. Yet these were surely. Take a moment uh, now for your own personal prayer and confession. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Look at your... 
updates uh, or additions. Uh, Ryan tells me that his parents are doing better, so uh, we're going to give a praise report for his parents and, and take them off uh, of the list for next week. They both have both of their shots and doing well, so that's a, a good report. Any updates on anyone else? Judy? Uh, my nephew, we've been praying for, um, we've got is going in Tuesday for major tests to see if he has improved or is declined or whatever. So, we need to so if they get positive, good results back, he'll be able to have that heart surgery that he needs. Yes, but I think it's still waiting until he gets a little stronger and a little older. Okay. Still. We'll continue to pray for young Luca. Nancy? All right. Break for Bill and uh, the second cataract surgery. Before long, we'll have Superman eyes. We'll be able to see anything. <laughs> yes? I, I want to thank everybody. I'm glad to be here today. But I want to thank everybody for their prayers, their cards, their phone calls. And um, I'm, I'm doing okay. Every day is a little bit better than. We're gonna keep, we're gonna keep you on our prayer list for a while, Debbie, just until you really feel good. I'll be about a year. About a year. <laughs> <laughs> My dad fell a few weeks ago and cracked the first vertebrae in his neck. Oh my. So he has to wear a, a collar for three months. Wow. All right, let us go before the Lord seek him in prayer. Well, we thank you for this beautiful morning, this fourth Sunday in Lent. Thank you for the, the message of this Sunday that uh, you are so powerful and, and you, you love us so much you sent your son lord uh, to take our punishment to take uh, our sin upon himself and, and there was power in, in his blood power of forgiveness power of new life and we give, give you praise and glory for that that's why we're here lord we we have new life in you and uh, because of that uh, we can wake up uh, on, on this morning and, and come here and worship you with joy in our hearts even though some of the pathway that some of us are traveling are difficult right now and challenging. You give us strength and give us hope to move along that pathway. We give you praise and glory and honor of that. We also thank you for the opportunity to pray for these people we've been praying for, that your hand of light will be upon them and touch their lives. Be with them, we pray. We think of young Luca going for those tests. We pray that they would get good results from those tests and that he would soon be able to have that heart surgery that he so desperately needs. Be with Bill as he goes uh, forth uh, for that second eye surgery. We pray that it would go well. There would be no complications. But we uh, think of Shane and Cole, who were just mentioned, uh, who has uh, COVID. And uh, we pray, Lord, you'd be with them and get them through without any problems. Uh, heal them, Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray for, for Bill also, who is uh, doing much better as far as his knee surgery go, but was exposed to COVID. We pray that he didn't catch it. Lord, be with him and watch over him and, and keep him Say, Lord, we lift up Patrick's dad to you and the neck problem, and we pray for healing. Put your healing hand upon him, and uh, we pray that he get through these next three months and that all will go well. Lord, we pray for uh, Jim's friend who's had an open heart surgery. We pray that that will go well. Guide the, uh, guide the surgeon's hands. We pray that uh, there would be no complications that would be successful. 
when we think of uh, the family of uh, Shirley Salvini, the boss, her brother Leonard, be with them, surround them with your presence and healing power, comfort their hearts through this loss, we pray. Lord, we pray for all those people battling cancer. We think of them, Lord, and ask you to be with them through their treatments. If, if they are cancer-free, Lord, continue to, to sustain them and keep them, them cancer-free. Watch over their lives and their family lives. Be with Tom, we pray, and Barbara. We think of, of Michael right now. Lift him up to you. And Linda, we thank you for the report on, on her. Continue to pray for her that uh, she would be cancer-free. Susie and, and Denny, we think of. And Tammy. Sally also in that battle. Kathy can lift up to you. And we think of Gail battling lung cancer and G. Watch over her. Share. We continue to pray for Ron and, and his victory over cancer. Be with him. Be with John Mann and, and uh, young Tom Rooney. We pray for and lift him up to you. Jennifer's mom, Pat. We continue to pray for. We think of uh, Marlene and Dawn also in that battle. And young Lee, Leo. We continue to pray for him. Sustain him, Lord. Be with young Dominic battling with bone cancer. And Karen, we lift up to you all these people, Lord. Give them strength through their treatments. If they're cancer-free right now, we pray that they would remain cancer-free. Be with our young people. We thank you, Sophia and Colton. And all of our young people, watch over them and give them strength day by day and step by step. To protect them, Lord, in this world that we're living in. Continue to be with Lisa, we pray. We lift up uh, Donna facing these difficulties, be with her. Libby's mom, Greta, and her health, watch over her. We continue to pray for Peggy and for complete healing of her vision. We think of Nancy Thaker and ask that you would be with her. Continue to be with these unspoken requests, each and every one of them. Lord, you know what's happening. Lord, you can work through them. Help these people out, we pray. Be with Carla Fair, Banks, and her health. We think of uh, Shirley Benline, facing health problems, Peggy and Randy Walker. We think of uh, Sue and uh, Bill. Lord, watch over them. Bob Marchkowski and his health problems. Uh, our friend Edna, continue to be with her. Patty, down in the kidney problem. Be with Don Thompson, Lord, who's in the hospital. Watch over him. We thank you for the praise report on the Frank and Karen. Uh, continue to be with them, Lord, and bless them. Continue to watch over Dave, Dave and Patty and Brunel. We pray for their complete recovery. Roy and Alberta, complete recovery. Lord, we pray for them. Colin, also back from COVID. Jackie, who is Jack's daughter. Lord, be with her. Continue to be with Kristen and Betty, both battling COVID. Lord, watch over uh, Debbie. We continue to lift her up to you and pray for her need. Complete recovery, Lord. Help her continue to grow stronger. Watch over Montel. She's up for knee surgery also. We pray for her healing. Lord, uh, we continue to pray for Doris Morrison also, who fell recently. Uh, be with Doris. Watch over her. Be with uh, David, who just had heart surgery. And Carl, who had a heart transplant. Lord, we lift them all up to you. Lord, we thank you for that opportunity. We know you hear our prayers. We know that you will work in these people's lives through medication, through the doctors, through the physicians, through your just healing touch on their lives. We give you thanks and praise for that. Now we pray for our world. We pray for the military people around the world who are standing in the gap for us, protecting our freedoms, putting their lives on the line for us. Be with them and watch over them and their families. We pray for our missionaries around the world sharing that uh, hope, that new light, that life that uh, Christ offers, Lord, uh, through the cross. Full forgiveness, a new start, uh, making us new creations. Be with them and the message that they preach. Protect their lives. Now we're going to sing together the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm.
Lord, we do take seriously that, uh, that command to give generously to the work of your kingdom. And I know you, you bless us over and over again because of that. You bless this church abundantly. And I thank you for each and every person here and, and the blessings you poured out into our life. Uh, we know, Lord, that uh, you've given us life. You've given us everything we have. We give you glory for that. And, and we pray that we can be your hands and feet in this world, Lord, to give to others and to help others. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 8. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go to Edom, but the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread, there is no water, and, the detest, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have we sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten in by the snake and looked at the bronze snake, he lived. This ends the reading of the Old Testament. Praise song for today, a um, song uh, we shall be familiar with. We've done uh, several times here I am to worship. Great song for uh, the time that, that we're in right now. Um, song talks about how uh, Jesus stepped down into the darkness into this world that we are living in. Um, and because of that, dying on the cross, he opened our eyes. But um, it also talks, um, we'll never know. Um, how much it costs um, for him coming down here and dying on the cross for our sins. So let's open our hearts and sing praises to God.
chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Hear the word of God. Just as Moses lifted up the stake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. The people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of this holy word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your, your word this morning. We do pray for insight. We do pray for light. That you could illuminate the truths and, and, and the depths of your word to us. Bring them to life in our lives and help us to embrace the, these powerful truths so that our lives might be strengthened and shaped and empowered by your spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, there was a, a uh, there's, there's a famous guy by the name of uh, Yogi Berra. I didn't say Yogi Bear, I said Yogi Berra. There is a difference. You know, Yogi Bear was one of my favorite cartoons as a kid. Yogi Berra, though, was a uh, New York Yankees catcher, I believe, in the 50s and 60s. Is that right, Bill? 50s and 60s, he was like an all-star catcher. He went on to be, become like a manager and a, a great, great well-known person. But uh, he's also known for his unusual quotes. And I would like to, to share some of Yogi Berra's unusual qu quotes with you. Here's one of them. When you come to a fork in a road, take it. Now you gotta think, you gotta think twice about Yogi's quotes. Sometimes they're hard to understand. How about this one? No one goes there anymore. It's too crowded. They're a little humorous. <laughs> Next one. I, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this one before. Baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. <laughs> I like this next one. And it's, you know, preachers go to a lot of funerals. Here's this next one. Always go to other people's funerals, otherwise they won't come to yours. Here's the last one. You better cut the pizza into four pieces because I'm not hungry enough to eat six. Wouldn't it be great if we could cut the pizza into four pieces and it would reduce the calories? Uh, just about every yogi, yogi bear quote you have to, to think twice about because it, it really doesn't make sense at all. The Israelites had a yogi bear moment in their wilderness journey. They became very impatient with God and, and with Moses. God was providing them with food and drink every day with manna through this difficult wilderness journey. We know it was difficult for them. <laughs> But they started becoming impatient again with God. They said, uh, you brought us out here in this wilderness to die. There's no bread. And we hate the way it tastes. Now, that's a Yogi Berra statement that if I've ever heard it. There's no bread. There's nothing to eat. And we hate the way it tastes. Uh, so when you, when you think of it like that, they, they were just like, Yogi, Yogi Bear and making a statement like that. I'm guessing it was because uh, they, they were uh, getting tired of the man and they were getting tired of the food that God provided. But this is what happened next. Numbers 20, 21, 6 and 7. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them and they bit the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we sinned, uh, we sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Now, I'm not a big snake fan. I don't know how many of you are snake fans out there or not. 
Now, when I was younger, we would go snake hunting and we would find snakes and, and we would bring them home and, and uh, make pets out of the snakes. Sometimes they would bite me. Not that they weren't poisonous, they didn't cause any problems. I just found snakes kind of boring uh, back then. You, you'd watch them crawl around in the box a little bit, but they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't jump around like a good dog would. Uh, and, and when I think about snakes, we all, we all uh, that when we see something like a snake, like a curled up hose or a twig out of the corner of our eyes, we jump. I don't know if you've noticed that before, if you have that, but, but when, when you think about that, that, that is uh, what is known as a natural selection innate response. When, when you jump like that, when you see a curled object. Now, why do we do that? Well, because thousands and thousands of years ago, our ancestors, the ones who, who saw a snake out of the corner of the eye, they didn't jump, they were bitten and they died. So those people died off. The ones who jumped, uh, they, they survived. And so that was passed on to us, that innate natural response to snakes, and we all have it. Now, in this passage of, of Scripture from Numbers, these poisonous Serpents really are very symbolic. God provided everything that the Israelites needed to get them through this journey to the promised land. And instead of being grateful, instead of being thankful to God and, and their leader Moses, they yielded to their human nature and they began to complain and gripe about everything. And that yielding to that human nature and turning away from God is really symbolic of these snakes coming in to camp and, and, and biting them. These snakes representing sin and, and their bite, their bites, their, that lethal venom is, is what sin does in our lives. This is what happened next. Oops. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them, and they bit the people. Men of the Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Notice that God did not remove the snakes from among them. Uh, the, the snakes representing sin were still around, around them. And, and the people, uh, that if they didn't uh, recoil from those snakes and get away, they, they would be bitten. But God provided a way of salvation from the venom uh, of uh, those snake bites, that lethal venom that separated from God. God told Moses to, to put this bronze snake on a pole and raise it up. And then when the people looked up at that snake, they would see that the power uh, of the snake's lethal ven venom uh, was rendered powerless. And, and so by faith, they looked up at that snake on the pole, they saw God had rendered that snake powerless, and they were healed. Now, there was a, a man by the name of... Whoops. Here we go. Well, I'm all messed up here this morning. There was a man by the name of Bill Haas. And unlike most of us, he liked snakes. And he liked poison snakes. And this man, uh, Bill Haas, he would go around obsessed with snakes, and, and he would find these poisonous snakes, he would catch them, and he would purposely extract the venom from these snakes and deliberately inject himself with this venom little by little. And what he was doing as he was injecting himself with increasing doses of, of this venom was he was building antibodies to the snake's venom. And after a while, he developed all of these antibodies to several kinds of, of, of snake bites, and then he would contribute his blood to uh, snake bite centers. And uh, in, in so doing, by contributing he, his blood to these snake bite response centers, he saved many, many, many lives. And, and I'm guessing it, it's the, the same theory of a vaccine. When we get a vaccine for, for polo or whatever disease we're, we're trying to, to uh, fight against, we build up in our blood, we build up antibodies that protect us 
from, from uh, the lethal disease or a lethal snake bite or whatever. And, and what we discover is there is power in the blood. Now, it's uh, fascinating that in the New Testament, Jesus made a specific